Welcome back to the channel. This is Nursing Practice Made Easy. I uh, hope you've been checking out all the videos on the channel. Um, this is where you get everything nursing. You know, like I always say, if you are first year, second year, third or fourth year nursing student um, about to sit your exam, if you are in a BSN program, uh, LVN program, master's program, all right this is your channel nursing practice made easy uh, okay so this video um will be continuing from two previous videos that uh been talking about you know the migration process and the transition process of the nurse from one country um to another you know and if you check out videos number one number two entitled migration transition you will you know get loads and tons of information that is going to help you all right especially persons who are outside of europe and of course persons also in european countries but outside of europe countries like you know down in the philippines and the countries across africa um you know countries down there in the caribbean and um you know other areas all right this this video will give you a lot of information or these videos uh, migration transition give you lots and loads and loads and tons of information that you need to help you to make the process easy all right and this is nursing practice made easy my name is patrick i'm a registered nurse and um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel um, click the like button and leave a comment and of course click the share button share it with others all right um this goes for a lot of nurses who want to migrate don't know the first step don't have any information you walk into something blindly but i don't want you to walk into anything blindly i want you to you know get into this and uh, make your transition as smooth as possible you know there are lots of um uh what do i say anxiety that comes with you know migration transition i say migration because you're moving from another country transition because you're making the transition into nursing of course the nursing process is universal cyclic dynamic we use it everywhere we go but at the same time you know transitioning can also be something cultural and so this is all about that piece of not just the nursing part of it but cultural piece of it um financial piece of it all of this uh, you will find in these videos um, that's going to help you and to make life you know so 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 much easier for you all right so videos number one number two we're talking about the, the migration transition process as the nurse so in this video number three guys um on migration transition for the nurse uh you know i'll be talking about you know what it is that you need to do and what to expect when you come so check out videos number one two and all the rest of the videos in the channel very um uh, informative interesting uh you know wherever you are you know there is a video in this um channel for you nursing practice made easy all right so in this video uh i'll be talking about of course you know the my experience in trans you know trans migration transition or transition migration um coming in um, you know, I might be mentioning a couple of companies and like I said, for legal purposes, let me say that I am not being paid by any company to promote their product or to be any spokesperson on, on behalf of their company. I am no spokesperson on behalf of any company. These videos are purely for education and, um, you know, they are not intended to mislead whatever you hear. On these videos you can always pull it up in literature or pull it up on um, Google and you'll find it all right so um, so once again I'm not being paid to promote any company I'm not promoting uh, in a company what I'm telling you is my experience and of course um, these companies that I'll mention they're public entities it's not that they're private it's not that you know it's not something that you can't go in the public domain and find okay so right so when I came uh, here into the United States, guys, uh, you know, of course, I was trained in Jamaica, down in the Caribbean. Um, I am a graduate of the Northern Caribbean uh, University. Um, the High Saint Chen School of Nursing is what it is called. All right. It, it, of course, it is in the Department of Health and Human Services or the college all right of health and human services okay so that's where that is 
All right, so, you know, I've worked as a nurse for a number of years. I've worked in type A, B, C hospitals, you name it, um, specialist areas. I've had the experience in there. All right, so, you know, pretty rounded right through, right across, education, that's me. Nursing preceptor, clinical instructor, that's yours truly. All right, so, um, but, you know, making the transition uh, from one country to the next, migration transition can be sometimes um tedious so um check out videos number one number two we'll talk to you about the contract and what it is that you need to do and you know the things that um you know are required where that is concerned so now um what i want to talk about here now and this will help you because what i won't talk about in this video uh, you will see things like budgeting coming out you'll talk about preparation you'll hear like family you know certain documentations and stuff like that all of this is going to be that all right, so, you know, let us say, all right, you know, after you look at videos number one, number two, you will get all the information. Transition, migration, trans um, transition is what the names of the videos are called. You will see a whole ton load of other videos um, that, of course, uh, you know, you want to subscribe to and watch and check out. All right, so let's say now, all right, complete your end clicks. And um, after you complete your NCLEX you now and everything is all set, what's going to happen? How does the recruiting go? Is what's the next step with recruiting? Or if you did the NCLEX on your own, what's the next step? If you did the NCLEX on your own, then you can now just get in touch with any one of those recruiters of your choice. You can shop around. Um, like I said, I did mention a couple in the other videos. You know, there is Avant and they are located down there in Castleberry. Florida, um, I think MedPro is somewhere out in Sunrise, Florida, um, in terms of their headquarters, as in their offices, right? You have um, O'Grady Payton, you can look up to find where he is or where they are. Um, you know, there is Park Post, Pass, Passport USA, you can find out where they are. And there are many other recruiters um, that are out there, but these are the ones that, you know, they've been around for a while. Like I said, they've been around the block. And so, you know, the other thing you also have to think, consider when you're going out uh, of a country, migration, transition, is the type of recruiter that you're going with. You also want to find out how much experience those these recruiters have and, you know, look them up, look at their, uh, you know, what comments persons who uh, made transition with them um, have to say about them and what it is that they did. What are the experiences? But don't just take all bad experiences because remember that sometimes people might just put their comments based on experiences. So check them out and, um, you know, do your DD, as we say, your due diligence and do your research and your reading and take your time and look on that. All right. So um, let's say you choose yourself a recruiter now and you've gone through the process. You pass your NCLEX now and everything. What next? All what they'll do they'll send you a bunch of papers what are those papers for aside from contracts which we talked about in the other videos um you know they want to also verify the number of hours that you have done by your supervisors in the different areas so i'm just giving you a heads up just to let you know that you know if you're planning then you want to stay in your area like i said in the other videos acute care is where you want to start off when you just graduate from school get some experience under your belt um you know if you can stay in one area for uh, as long as you possibly can usually if you are if you are two years in the facility and you stay a good six months in one area that's good let's say you spend six months in the er or you spend the full two years in the er or the full two years in um the uh, medical unit or surgical unit or maternity whatever the area is that's good because then they realize that, all right, you would be well seasoned and that is your skill set uh, in this area. So it gives them something to work with. All right. But you want to stay so that you can, when it's time for those papers to be signed, you can go to your supervisor and the supervisor can certify that, yep, you have done so many hours um, over this period of time. And they'll also want to find out from you how many hours per week are you working? Usually recruiting companies prefer that you work full time, but you can work part time and it's still fine because uh, if you can work, say, 28 to 32 hours per week for them, it's fine. All right. 36, 40, that's full time for them. It's fine. All right. So sometimes you find yourself that, all right, let's say you're not full time, 
but your part time. But those part time hours are consistent, and you can show that these part time hours are really consistent 28, 32 hours per week. Consistent, I mean, that's good. All right, are you working full time or you're working uh, 36, 40 hours per week, 60 hours over time? It all depends, but anything, of course, 36 and climbing is considered full time. All right, so 28 to 32 part time per diem. Once it's consistency, you can show that every single week you do these hours in this area. That is something that, of course, owns your skill set and you're built up on that. And you know, recruiters look at that and they say, okay, not that because you're not full time, it doesn't mean that you know you can't go through. So, this is um, you know, what is the other thing that you think about in terms of your hours and how long you spend in the area. The recruiter is going to look at that so let's say all right they send you your papers you sign your papers up you get all of the stamps of approval you send the papers back to them whether electronically or so they will require a police record of course so of course you know the police goes in their database just to make sure that um you know you have no criminal records and these of course is going to be sent to them directly um so that they can get that all right they do all of this thing and then they, are, uh, they do your visa screen. After you do the visa screen, of course, all of these things you can opt to pay for. They are going to say to you, this is what the cost is and so. So you're paying for all of these. Some companies will pay for everything. And like I said in the previous video, but you'll have to pay back for it. And usually you pay back for it in hours. You know, the, the, the hours is usually what you pay back for it in. And sometimes it costs your hours to lend. The more money they spend to bring you in the country, Usually, the more time you spend giving it back to them. That's just how it goes. All right. Um, or, or if you reimburse them, depending on the agreement, it all depends on what your contract is. Okay. So now, having done that, they're going to bring you through the visa screen. Then you have what is called a DS-260 form. And these, of course, is where you're going to put all your family members. Who is it that you're bringing? And family member means you're immediate. So if you're, if you're married, then... It's going to be you and your husband and the children in that union that you're going to be putting on this because usually they move the entire family. All right. If you're single and you're not married, then that's fine. If you are single and, you know, you have a, a, a fiancé, spouse, as the case may be, and you want to get married just as you start the process, that's also okay. It doesn't matter. But if you're not married, then of course you're going to go by yourself because obviously they're really taking spouse as in your husband. And, um, uh, you know, in the case of um, with a husband or wife, whichever party it is that is making the application, either one is going to be bringing the other. All right. <laughs> and then, no, um, you know, the children, of course, also. So all of these are going to be put in on this form. That form is going to be paid for. And then um, here comes the waiting process. So they, that is going to go through a series of embassies. So it's going to go from, say, um, down in, say, Texas, and then depending on the country that you are, when that file gets to that um, consulate, that embassy in your country, when the file gets there, um, usually you're going to get an email from the embassy to say, uh, you know, this they got your file and so forth and so on. Sometimes they'll notify the agency. The agency might give you a heads up. But of course, once the file reaches and goes through, it's usually all to the agency's hand. They have to wait. So you now have to start communicating with the agency to say, all right, this is the communication I got from the embassy, so and so. And um, the embassy gets to you. They'll, say, they'll set you a date. But first of all, they want you to go and do what is called a medical, right? And that medical is usually that you have to have those medical results to turn up for that visa interview. All right. So now if you're not up to date with your shots and you're not up to date with certain, you know, for example, um, what your, your PPD as in pure protein derivative test, we call it a man to test, AKA man to test or tuberculin test so it comes i mean it's the same thing we're talking about and depending on what the results are you might have to do an, a, a chest x-ray and of course they'll send the disc or the results along with the med other medicals that you did to say that all right that if you have any medical conditions all of that will be mentioned in there uh if you're fit and healthy then fine um your shots will be updated documented if there are certain shots that you never get then you'll pay for those shots on that day 
So what I would say to you then is that on the day of your medical, when you're going in, depending on the country that you're in, you know, I mean, the dollar varies if you're in the Philippines, if you are probably say down under in Australia, if you're in the Caribbean, you know, it really varies. But based on, you know, what it is per shot, uh, you probably want to have, let me use the United States, let me use the US dollars as a benchmark. You probably want to have with you maybe say a thousand dollars, right? Say a thousand US dollars um, at most. I use that as a benchmark because some of the shots, depending on how many family members that you're getting updated with their shots, it can run you up to as, as far as a thousand dollars US or more, you know, I mean, the less persons is the less you're going to spend. And if those shots are already up to date, then obviously you're not going to be really spending much. All right. So um, on the day you go, you get your, once you get that, uh, that medical done, then of course they're going to really seal up all of that. And you're supposed to take it into the day when you're actually going to do that interview, that, that visa interview. And, you know, you want to bring all of the persons, of course, who is going to go with you. They'll tell you, you want to bring this person and you go. And, of course, that's the day that they will grant you that visa. And that visa, of course, is usually a residency visa. All right. So the visa that is going to be in your passport is going to be good for one year. Um, usually, you once you get the visa, then the next thing you go online and your uh, recruiting company will guide you to pay for the, the green cards or the, perma, or, or the residency cards, as we call them, green cards. All right, for each um, family member, whatever that adds up to. And of course, a forwarding address. Usually, it is the address of the recruiting company that they are going to use because, um, you know, they usually provide, they have your housing complexes or hotels and they use those pretty often so that's going to be the address that they'll tell you to put because this is where you're going to be usually you're going to be with them for a while so now you have to make arrangement now where your family members are concerned because usually you bring the family into the country so you want to make arrangement for your family members to stay because the recruiting company is really not going to put up everybody. You are the one that they are interested in. You're the nurse. You're the one that they really bring in. So they'll make provisions for you, but they'll also help you to make suggestions, you know, when it comes down to family. So you want to identify if you have family members in the U.S. Um, that the, the, they can stay with for the two weeks or three weeks transition. Some you will have up to a six week transition, some a four week transition. And what is that transition process? That transition process is where this, this recruiting um, um, agency, they have their labs and everything set up. Remember, it is really nurses that work with them. And some of these nurses are experts at what they do. Some of them work as in-service educators at different places. And so the company employs them. So when you come in, of course, you're going to be going through a series of transition. That's really getting you up to speed, um, you know, with certain... Um, practices in the, the country that you're just coming in. So, um, you know, things like IV pumps, you will be, you know, familiar with those. They're going to assist you with getting your driver's license. And so they also work with, you know, instructors of different driving schools so they can process you, take you to the DMV and um, so that you can get your license before you get out of um, that particular state to the hospital that they are going to deploy you. So you do that. Um, so if you don't have a driver's license in your country, sometimes it's good to really, uh, you know, get a feel of what the car is like and all of that. Um, albeit though, depending on the country that you're coming from, because if you're coming from a country where you drive on the left hand side, then, you know, you come to the US, you're going to be driving on the right hand side. And so the wheel of the car in the country on the left hand side is going to be on the left, whereby the wheel, as in the steering wheel, is going to be on the right in the vehicles in the United States. And so um, that psychomotor switch on that psychomotor transition um, from left to right sometimes can pose a challenge. So you're going to be going to, when you get, when you really come with a good recruiting company that, um, you know, does all of these things, then, um, you know, you, 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 you actually help to make that transition. Um, the recruiting company that I um, came into the United States with, uh, they were very good at uh, making the transition 
they're uh, uh, you know making sure that you get your driver's license they you know set you up and all of that does that like I said you want to make preparation for where you're going to put your family until you know where they are going to place you in terms of what hospital they're going to put you in because it doesn't necessarily mean that where they have their office in the state that they have their office that is actually where you're going to um, get a hospital. A hospital can be in many different states. So that's really what you sign up for. What you sign on is that they will place you that. That's the agreement that you had. You could, can be at a place where, you know, it's snow, it's cold and all of that. And we'll do that in another video uh, when it comes on to choosing the type of state that you want to stay in. I'm going to be, we're going to be talking about, or I'm going to be talking about in another video what are the things to consider when you decide that you want to settle down in a particular state? And as one who has been in uh, the system for going on six years, I, I'm, I'm able to tell you, uh, you know, all of that understanding how all of this work, having been through it. All right, so they'll assist you with your driver's license. You want to make sure your family is comfortable somewhere. If you don't have any relatives, then, you know, booking a hotel, that means now that that now takes me to your preparation for coming. So while you're waiting on the papers, what is it that you're going to be doing? You're, these are the things that you're going to be considering. How many family members will be coming in with me on the plane or how many will be coming in after me? Because it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone has to come in with you at the same time. You know, once they have been granted that visa, they still have up to a certain period of time before um, they get out of the country before, you know, and, and these are stipulations of immigration and border services, you know, the USCIS, these are their stipulations. Uh, you know, how long after you get a permanency or a residency visa, how long can you stay in your country before you actually come into the country on that visa? Usually you have a couple of days. So sometimes, you know, when that transition is made and you come into the States and you now find a place to rent and you settle down, then that's the time the family can come in. Or if you want them to come in with you because you have relatives that you can let them stay with, and then they'll come from the relatives that they are staying with, then you can also do that. That's an option. All right. But if you don't have any place for them to stay, then um, it's not that, you know, they definitely have to fly immediately as they get that um, that residency visa, they still have a couple of days to play with, and that couple of days will give you time to complete the the um what you call the the orientation um with the company or the transition with the company, and then when you get the place that you are rented now, then of course you can allow your family to come. All right, so giving you all of this nice and straight and dandy. So that I'll help you and um, take you and save you a whole lot. All right. So and that's why we call this nursing practice made easy. We not only look out for talking about clinical practice, but we also talk about things like these because this is all a part of what makes nursing practice easy. OK, so now um, when when you come in, um, depending on which recruiting agents you come with, you know, they they should make sure. So these are the things that I'm saying um you know your wisdom will tell you the questions that you want to ask you now when you come up on a recruiting agency by the things i'm saying to you all right so you know um driver's license you know uh assisting with uh in terms of locating a good place for rent and when you're thinking about locating a place for rent when you come in as a nurse all right here's what you want to consider you want to look at proximity to the hospital you want to look at proximity to a shopping center where you can get beer essentials and things um, as it relates to furniture, as it relates to food, uh, you know, and certain beer essentials that you're going to need. You want to look at the proximity to those um, areas. You want to look at um, if you're going in a snow state, how far away from the main road is that place that you are renting? Because remember when the snowstorm gets bad, guys, um, the person who is uh, responsible for plowing that snow, they might not come and plow the snow. Whereby, if you're closer to the main, uh, you know, the government, of course, always have their plows. So they're going to always be clearing the main, clearing the main. So you want to kind of look at your strategic location in terms of where you have your house. Can you get to work 
if there's a bad storm, how far away are you from work? How far away from the main, as in the Class A road, versus you going to live on a Class C road, which is a back road? And the back roads are usually the last to be plowed. And um, so you want to consider that. So all of this information, very invaluable, that I'm giving you. We're talking about migration transition, all right, so that you can help you. So think about that. When you talk about where is it that you want to get that house for you and your family, those are the things you consider. Proximity to your workplace, proximity to the Class A road. So in case of, um, you know, major disaster, snow, especially if you're in a snow state, uh, you know, can you get out, can you get to work? You're going to back in. How long are they going to take to plow that? You also want to consider that transition when you're thinking about where is it that you put in your house. And uh, I'm telling you all of this through experience. And, um, you know, I, I was one who assisted with transitioning persons as well for um, the recruiting company that I came up with. So, you know, you're talking to somebody who is very, very experienced and somebody who's very experienced is actually telling you, all right, because I've driven, I've taken people here, there, I've gotten them settled. I've helped them with the paperwork in terms of, you know, the contract for the tenant, the lease, all of this thing, you know, I, so I'm telling you, right? I'm not making this up. And so now uh, you want to see that house. Now, when you come down now to choosing a house, if the house is in um, a snow state, a state that's really cold, all right, you want to make sure that the heating system in that house is good. So when you go to look on the house, these are the things that you won't know because you're coming from tropical country, a country, and these are things that people are not, not going to tell you. And if it's one, if it's a recruiting company that doesn't do their diligence in terms of meticulous, they get you in the country now, and your contract is signed, so now you're legally bound by the contract, uh, you know. And if it is now that you have to find your way out, because some of them, um, you know, they will. You're in the country, you sign the contract, you're legally bound. So, you know, you have an obligation to fulfill that contract. Um, you know, how you get to that hospital, sometimes it's up to you. Instead of flying you, sometimes they'll tell you that you have to drive a car. Now, remember, you're just coming in this country. Um, perhaps never driven so many miles of road before. You might not be a driver, especially the women. You're not very much of a driver. Or you used to drive on the left-hand side. So, of course, switching in terms of that psychomotor switch from left to right does take some doing in terms of practice and so uh, all of that you know don't understand the traffic system in terms of the yield sign that is now on a different side that it was you know um what does all this traffic like means and all of that because you know all of that you might have not not getting that very well so now if your recruiting company now is saying to you that all right this is where your hospital is and you say all right you're going to be you know, you want to take a plane there and uh, they're not willing to pay for it. So they say, well, you have to drive. You probably haven't even had the car yet because sometimes not all the time you can get that car during that transition process. And in another video, I'll talk to you all about cars and how you go selecting your cars and talk to you about, of course, um, you know, your, your credits and, you know, how you can do all of this and perfectly legal so you can make your life more comfortable. So when you're choosing your house, you um you know want to think about that if it's warm then you know fine but when normally in a cold state where snow falls it's very important all right so we're talking about if your house you want to make sure the heating system is in that house um you know one of the experience i had when i came and went into a snow state and um you know in one of those northern states of course and you know that's uh, snow and the, the and the cold in the winter is bitter and of course, I, uh, you know, the, the place that I rented, you know, the, the landlord set the thermostat at, um, at 65 and it's set at 65, it can't move, right? And uh, I don't really think that was perfectly legal, but you're just coming in, so you don't know. And the cold is bitter because outside is so much below zero. So, you know, obviously 65 can't be what you want to set your thermostat at. That's just really cool. All right, that's like on a cool day. Um, so you're really going to need to crank that heat up. So if you're going to get a house where the landlord is setting the thermostat and you can't move it, all right, you're just coming in, you probably don't know the law, and so they'll make it look to you as if to say they have the right to do that. 
but then that's a human right violation right there. So these are the things you want to pay in mind. Now I had to pay to learn this, but now you get it for free. And um, that's what nursing is all about. All right, so um, thermostat, make sure you can turn the thermostat to whichever degree you want it. Um, the landlord don't set it. Make sure that that house in that snow state is, um, is, is properly insulated. So, you know, the stuffings and all of that, no air coming in. That house that I got, you know, the lady were um, the lady was very rude. She had the audacity to come and tell me, um, you know, you guys have to put on some cool, uh, some warm clothing um, to keep yourself warm because she had, you know, set the thermostat like that. You know, it turned out um, later on. I found out that you know she was really one of those prejudiced kind of people. But you know, that's by God. All right, but I'm just giving you the experience so that you'll know. Uh, exactly what all of that is about and so yes you want to make sure that it's warm it's that insulated you also want to look at the garbage disposal system is it that they provide garbage disposal or you have to carry your garbage elsewhere if you have to take your garbage somewhere and they don't provide a garbage disposal you don't want that house you want to find another one um, you know you want to know if you have to shovel your own snow and what part of it are you responsible to shovel so if you're going to take a house that has a long driveway and you have to shovel your own snow you don't want that because believe me when you have in feet of snow to shovel it's not going to be nice all right especially in a case of a medical emergency where the ambulance or the fire truck can't get in or out so these are the things you want to consider when it comes on to uh you know we talk about transition migration migration transition and you know acquiring things when it comes on to my preparation all right so that's what this is all about preparing um in terms of getting the house and what is it that i need to do when it comes on to taking my family and all of this and how do i set myself right all right so remember all of these things in terms of when you're going house hunting this is what you want to do all right you want to look at the space how much space do you have how many family members do you have right versus what house is it that you're going to need um you also want to look at the how long the house has been made because some houses are old and sometimes they might have certain amount of lead residue in them even though they're supposed to be lead free but some of them will have you sign a legal disclaimer to say that you agree that um you know the, there might be yeah, a certain level of lead in there or lead free whatever it is but the legal disclaimer is really just to get them off the hook because it says that you did agree that there might be lead and then of course if that lead creates problem later on so know all of this this is all information you know that nobody will tell you this is valuable it's something that you know it's not just going to drop in your lap like that all right and this is why we have this channel nursing practice made easy so now um having you know your house and you think about your location of the house and all of this all the houses all of those things that i just told you bear that in mind so when your family comes in you look at that look at the school what's the proximity of the, um, of the school you know if you have young children is there a daycare close by and you know for your school age children is there a middle school or a high school close by and is it accessible you want to know all of that you want to have all of that all right, and when you when you put in together, guys, make sure that you have all those school reports for your children because it makes it a lot easier. You know, make sure you know the transcript and so for your children. It makes it a lot easier. Some school uh, schools that you're, in, you're going to enroll your children in, they might need an official transcript. But sometimes an unofficial transcript get the process going until the official comes and so that way it doesn't set you back so have all of that together because that's really important um so all of this you know you're talking about you can do all of that while you're actually waiting for these papers to come through and when you come in you will have all of that you know in um, your disposal all right so that's the thing about housing all right and um you know in our next video we will be talking about, you know, uh, you know, you're acquiring the car and then we'll talk about things, of course, like your credits and um, what are some of the entities and the areas that will be good for you in helping you to get off the ground. Giving you all of this information, like I said, legally speaking, I am not being paid by any agency to do this. This is just nurse talking to nurses. All right. So until next video, guys, um, you know, I'll... Uh